Hello and welcome once again to the Tinker's Workshop. Today I wanted to show you the progress that I've been making on my Captain America ball chair project. I posted about this project several weeks ago and now I've gathered up the materials I need to start construction in the workshop. The ball chair project will be another large build so I thought it best to post this video while I can find the time. The 42 inch diameter fiberglass chair is designed to be taken apart in sections for easier transport through standard doorways. It is made up of four separate sections that are bolted together when they are completed. This makes the chair actually easier to build and more manageable to move from place to place when the need arises. In this video, I'll show you how my new styrofoam wheel or ring cutting jig that I designed and built for my tilt top hot wire table will work. This is an essential tool that makes this project possible. I'll also show you the construction steps I took to build the first two sections of the ball chair. So let's get started. To start the ball chair project, I needed to set up and cut a 43 inch square piece of one inch thick styrofoam. In the center of this square, I also needed a one inch diameter hole for the pivot point to make the first ring in the assembly using the ring jig on the hot wire table. I marked the center of the foam and then used a special tool called a hot knife that is produced by a company named Hot Wire Foam Factory. This tool looks like a steel rod with a handle on it that is plugged into a power supply to heat the rod for cutting styrofoam. It's a great tool and works perfectly for this part of the project. Attached to the tool is a 90 degree alignment plate to keep the heated rod cutting perfectly perpendicular to the foam surface. Once I have a hole cut, I used a 1 inch diameter dowel to check the fit. A close fit is just what is needed to make a perfect ring or wheel on the hot wire jig. So here I am in the workshop, ready to cut this rather large piece of foam and get it up on the table, if I can get it there, and get it set up on the peg in the middle. This is the pivot point, we had the hole. And we start cutting, and which cuts very slow, so I had to time lapse this forward. I get to a corner and it starts dangling, so I take this portion of it and snap it off. Simply it's just easier to keep things clean. So we get to another corner and snap it off. There we go. And finally keep rotating around and get to the very last corner. And you see it's a perfect wheel. It's a very nice clean cut and perfectly round. So I adjusted the assembly now and moved the wheel forward an inch and a half because I want an inch and a half ring. And I put some tape here to keep that ring from dangling because I don't want to break the ring. I'm going to keep, try to keep it all in one piece. And uh, so we'll put some uh, painter's tape on there and get back to uh, cotton again. And there we're just about ready to finish up with the wheel. There, now the, now the ring has been cut. So we'll take the tape that's on this ring uh, uh, off of off of the wheel because we want to separate the two and that's the advantage of the painters tape it's so much easier to unpeel this stuff rather than anything else rather than say duct tape so I pull the last piece off of here and there we go we've got a that one more piece of tape there And it has a cut in the middle simply because you've got to be able to get it off the machine. And there, there you've got it. And it's a perfect ring. So the next section is the spacers between the rings. And I have, I call this one rib one because it's the first ring. And I needed, uh, originally designed for 12 of these spacers, but realized it wasn't going to work. So I ended up having to cut 24 which makes it uh, easier to uh, assemble, you'll see here in a minute. So I take the ring and set it down on my table and start uh, hot gluing all these spacers in between and cut the second ring and hot glue it to that. And so it gives a really nice first, first section. So then on the outside, I, I cut strips that are a quarter inch thick and one inch wide of styrofoam 
and then hot glue those around and they get laid on just like I did with my Velomobile or my kayak or just like a cedar strip canoe. You just bend just real easily and there's the first section built and uh, the separate colors with blue and uh, pink uh, helps show this off pretty nicely. So here's the second ring. It's done the same way. I cut the second second ring and laid it just, just laid it up on top of the first setup. And again, more spacers. These are shaped a little bit differently. And uh, then we put the uh, top ring on it. And uh, it gives gives a uh, we're about halfway through the ball already. We only need two more sections to complete the the sphere, the uh, ball chair. Again, it's all stripped with foam. And later on, this will be glassed on the inside and then outside. And then you can see all the all the ribs on the inside. A lot of these ribs will be taken out when the assembly is completed. The amount of time to build these two sections of the ball chair took approximately 15 hours. The build is easy enough to do, and the end result will go a long way in creating the perfect shape for this project. For more information about the hot knife I use for making the pivot hole and the creation of the rings in the video, go online to hotwirefoamfactory.com. There you'll find much more information about this tool and other great products they produce just for cutting styrofoam. If you'd like to learn more about my Captain America ball chair and a lot of other interesting projects that I've designed and built, stop by my blog at thetinkersworkshop.blogspot.com. Thanks for watching.